So you've decided to bite the bullet and have a crack at Factorio with the Angel and Bob suite of mods. What joys can you expect to experience along the way? Hello, I'm Bigfoot and I'm going to take you through the ABCs of A and B. The first thing to note is that you should prepare yourself for a factory that will take you at least 300 hours to finish. If you can do it in less time than that, first time around, then you should probably be doing something else more important with your time than playing Factorio. But if you are here, then I'm guessing that you are fully aware of how complex a challenge you are undertaking, so what details do you need to know? Number one, the ores. One of the first things you may notice is that the ore patches on the ground are weird and don't really sound like anything you've heard of before. You can mine it, crush it, stick it in a furnace, and suddenly it will produce an iron or copper plate, but it isn't iron or copper ore. What you have to imagine is that these patches of ore on the ground are minerals i.e. a combination of several elements all fused together. We can stick it in a furnace and it will make a plate of the most abundant element in that mineral, but in the process we burn off the other fringe elements that make up the rest of it. Fringe elements that we will need. Because no longer are we restricted just to iron and copper, now we have a whole medley of ingredients that need to be created, processed and managed. Tin, lead, zinc, nickel, gold, titanium, silver, cobalt, tungsten, silicon and aluminium. You will need all of these. And all of these elements are processed and purified from the six different ores you can see on the ground. Sapphirite, styrotite, obmonium, rubite, crotinium and jivalite. The purification and smelting part of your factory is one of the most important parts that you will build and it will need to deal with all six ores. There are other elements in there but you don't really need them. Things like manganese or platinum or chrome or at least you don't need them at the moment. They are currently dead ends, but that might not be the case forever. Number two, recipe changes. If you play Angel and Bob for any significant length of time, then you need to be prepared for the recipes to change in subtle but wide ranging ways. If you leave your game to update automatically, then you need to expect that at some point in the future, a recipe will change and really mess up your factory sometimes in ways you may not even notice for hours and hours of gameplay. I'm looking at you, Silicon Ingot. Every update, something will change. Sometimes it will be big, sometimes it will be small, but it will matter every single time. Number three, multiple recipes. You now have access to multiple recipes that all produce the same end result, just with more and more elaborate processes for the benefit of much greater efficiency rates. Iron plates, for example, can be produced from a simpler process as putting crushed sapphirite or iron ore into a furnace, just like in vanilla, but you will end up burning a lot of the raw mined material for not a lot of output. If you want to produce more iron plates from the same raw ingredients, then you will need to build much more elaborate processes. You now have choices. For some processes, you might decide to go with a very large but primitive setup, and others might be very large but elaborate. Either way, it is going to be pretty big, but you now have a choice about how you go about things. And those choices will have pretty large ramifications for how the rest of the factory performs. You may find that a small change to a process will have wider implications than you immediately thought. And this is because of issue number four. Number four, waste products. There are a lot of waste products that you will produce as a result of processing the primary materials that the rest of your factory needs. If you do not deal with these waste products, then they will build up and jam the primary process, so you need to treat them just as seriously. From my own personal experiences, I would say that the success of your factory will come down to how well you can process these waste products, and if you can get it right, there are some incredible benefits to be gained. They may be waste products, but they are incredibly valuable to fringe processes around your factory, so treat them as a valuable commodity. Crushed rock, geodes, sulfur, slag, mineralized water, and salinated water. These are all incredibly annoying waste products, but also difficult to otherwise produce by other means. Having a reliable setup for dealing with all of these will be invaluable at the end stages. Number five, pipes. We now seem to have access to gases as well as liquids. I don't know for sure whether the gases behave differently in pipes, but they definitely seem to. It is also difficult to tell sometimes what is a gas and what is a liquid. I'm looking at you, Ammonia. But ultimately, it shouldn't really matter 
because of a simple rule I came up with. If you are dealing with a gas or a liquid and the combined input or output of a block is in the hundreds of units per second and it needs to travel any sort of distance, then expect problems. If the combined input or output is in the thousands, then regardless of distance, expect problems. If you find yourself in either of these scenarios, then you will need to have multiple pipes for each gas or liquid, or use barrel loops. The liquids definitely seem to be more viscous than in vanilla, i.e. they are thicker and move less freely, so flow rates are already comparatively lower, but if you include the kind of factory size necessary to solve Angel and Bob, then the issue is compounded. The prime offenders to worry about are purified water, the waste waters, that's sulfur, nitric, chloric and fluoric, and depending on your setup, mineralized water, salinated water, and residual gas. Maybe even ammonia if you are trying to really push the rocket launches. If you try pumping any significant quantity of any of these through a pipe system over large distances, then expect problems. Number six, the squeeze. Because of these issues with pipes, I like to use a strategy I call the squeeze. If we look on the screen, this bit of the factory is manufacturing sulfuric acid. These machines in the middle are the ones actually producing the acid, and then these two either side are producing the sulfur dioxide that the acid needs. So the sulfur dioxide is essentially squeezing the machines in the middle and forcing the ingredients in. If we look at the iron smelting part of the factory, I do something similar. The molten iron is produced in these induction furnaces, which are in the middle of all the casting machines that need it as an ingredient. By trying to spread the liquid or gas producing elements of the factory in between those that need it as a primary ingredient, we can rely on a much more even flow of material than if we dealt with them one at a time. This particular strategy I have found to be incredibly powerful. Number seven, sulfuric acid. While we're on the subject of sulfuric acid, I should mention that this is probably the single most important element that you will produce in your factory, and by extension, makes sulfur the most important waste product and sulfuric wastewater the most important material to process. You will need sulfuric acid pretty much everywhere in your factory, and you will need a lot of it, but you can only get sulfur from the sulfuric wastewater. So the level of sulfuric acid in your system is entirely dependent on how you manage this process. You will produce sulfuric wastewater in a number of different areas in your factory, and it isn't really possible to collect it all in one place. Believe me, I have tried. So the best strategy is to process the sulfuric wastewater on site and then collect all the sulfur into one place to make the sulfuric acid. In my latest Angel and Bob factories, I harness every single drop of sulfuric wastewater and extract every single piece of sulfur I can. And despite this, I can only really generate a surplus of a couple hundred thousand bits of sulfur after hundreds of hours of the factory running. If you don't treat sulfur as the valuable resource it is, and you end up clarifying a lot of the sulfuric waste water, it is incredibly easy for the sulfuric acid to run dry, and this will eventually bring maybe 50% of your factory to a standstill. Sulfuric acid is incredibly important. Number eight, process grouping. Some materials are only required in a few locations, so there are some great efficiencies to be found by grouping similar processes together and keeping the lengths of pipes to a minimum. This is something that might take a few attempts before it becomes clear, but if through experience or in-depth research of the technology tree, you can come up with a good strategy for grouping similar processes together, then there are very clear benefits to be had. Part of my dealings with Angel and Bob have just been efforts to make my life a little easier. So if I can group things together, then there are less materials to manage factory-wide and I can worry about bottlenecks a little less. This is a complicated set of mods, so anytime you can make things a little easier for yourself, you should take it. Number nine, trains. In vanilla, the critical process is in delivering enough raw materials into the factory itself. The copper, the iron, and the oil. So the trains and the mining tends to be the thing that limits how your factory is performing. If you deliver more ingredients, then the factory processes more material. But in Angel and Bob, everything runs so slowly that the critical process isn't in delivering the ore, 
but in how much you can process at any one time. Your trains will be sitting idle a lot. To be honest, you don't really need train or inputs for the ores, but you do need them for the oil and the gas because of the previously mentioned issue with pipes. So for me, if I need them for one process, I may as well build it in for all the others. But you could choose to do things differently if you so wish. Number 10, SPM. My dislike of SPM as a metric for determining the performance of a factory probably stems from my experiences with Angel and Bob in that if you are caring about SPM, you are caring about the wrong thing. Science in Angel and Bob is like a key that unlocks the door of better technologies. It is less important how quickly that key opens the door. All, all we really care about is that we can open the door at all. The ingredients required to create most of the science processes are hard earned and require a lot of factory to produce. In fact, I build my factories in a specific order so that I unlock the sciences one by one. I build the bits I need for red and green, then have the bits for blue, then the bits for purple and so on. This is my prime motivation for deciding which elements of the factory I need to build at any one time. In Angel and Bob, there is no SPM. There is only S. Number 11, mods that help. One of the most useful mods that I use is what is this really used for? If we click on the magnifying glass, we get access to a whole medley of gases and liquids. And if we click on an individual element, we can see where it is produced and where it is needed as an ingredient. For physical objects, we can pick it out of our inventory and drop it into the magnifying glass. I use this mod a lot to show which items I need to plan for. For a lot of the mod recipe changes that I mentioned earlier that have happened over the years, most of them I have picked up from this mod. Every time I start to build a factory element, I check it through this mod to see where I need to plan for the inputs and the outputs. If there have been any changes, then I can pick it up before I've begun the build process. It is also worth mentioning Helmod, which is really useful if you want to start understanding the mathematics of what you need to build, how many machines, how many belts, etc. At some point I got fed up with finding bottlenecks, so I started using this mod extensively to understand how to design in a way that avoided them. But if you are just running through your first build, this probably isn't as necessary. And finally, number 12. Test, test, test. These factories are incredibly complicated. There will be problems, there will be mistakes. The only way you are going to find out where the problems are is if you thoroughly investigate whether it is operating the way you want it to. Some problems it will be obvious because a large part of your factory will stop working. Some problems it will take many hours for obvious signs to develop. Some problems will only make a negligible difference and might not ever make themselves be known in an obvious way, but you will only find them if you look for them. Some problems there will be quick fixes and some will require fundamental rebuilds and there will be everything everywhere in between. Being able to test and investigate and understand will be crucial in finding the right areas that need to be improved. But again, you might not necessarily care about this at the start, but at some point a bottleneck will develop that stops something useful from happening and you immediately care. If the science key suddenly stops opening the door of better technologies, then you cease to own that key, so it will matter. Test and investigate. If you see an issue, fix it. It might not matter now, but it will at some point. Okay, so that is it. My 12 Angel and Bob tips. I hope this has been useful. If you have any questions, by all means pop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. But other than that, that's it. Till next time.